action. They always say the more money you have, the less freedom you have, actually. Because, uh, you know, you have so many things to take care of. People to pay, permits, and when you're doing it, uh, you know, the guerrilla style, it becomes a revolutionary thing. It becomes, you know, counterculture. You're free, supposedly. My name is Robert uh, Bishara, and uh, I study theater and music. I'm pursuing an MFA in film and digital imaging here at GSU. Yeah, my dad is. Uh, He's a filmmaker, like I told you. He started out as a documentary filmmaker. He did that. He's uh, what you may call a socially conscious uh, filmmaker, so he really cares about uh, changing society in a way. I've done a number of short films. My first one was called Partially Me. It's uh, It was like a two-minute uh, film in which I was trying to define myself in two minutes. And uh, it was part of a trilogy uh, called Trilogy, and the second part was called uh, Six O'Clock Sex, uh, 666, also known as Longing for a Bonding. It was also sort of an uh, introspective film about loneliness. These films basically explore uh, dream states and, and, you know, human psyche. So, and I'm just interested in how they visualize that. Well, basically, to kind of summarize it, uh, this guy goes to a party and he comes back around 3 a.m. in the morning to his car that's parked in some uh, parking lot and he opens the car, goes in to discover that there's some adhesive on the wheel. He's, he starts getting freaked out Then he starts hearing sounds in the back seat of the car. He looks back, he discovers that there's a guy who is uh, naked in the back seat of his car and he's masturbating and it just freaks him out uh, and you know it really happened, true story and I'm making a film about it. Sounds good, we'll see you then bro. Take care. See you, bye. I think acting is the most challenging thing. I think it's even harder than directing. Part of it is letting go and uh, trusting that most you know, my DP will uh, I think it's even achieve what I want him to achieve. And uh, you know, it's very clear about my shot lists. Uh, for the stage, very organized. Maybe a little bit obsessive about it. I tell him all of that. We discuss the storyboard, the shot lists beforehand, and uh, I just put my trust in, into him. You know, and if something I'm hesitant about, I would uh, watch it after. You know, just doing the same. If it's something uh, like a long take or something you know, that involves camera movements, and being that I come from a theater background, I like the idea that it's you know one take, no interruptions, no sophisticated angles, just cam interesting camera movements, and uh, focus on acting performance. And uh, there's something magical about those long takes from the past. Uh, just. There's something Zen almost about them, you know. It's a meditative approach to filmmaking, uh, and uh, yeah, some uh, usually the good filmmakers nowadays, the especially from the older generations, they still uh, you know employ that. We lost those uh, due to MTV, <laughs> MTV fast-paced uh, editing and you know commercials and all of that and uh, you know a short attention span and all of the, the internet full of pop-ups and ads and just we can't focus really I think fast editing is not I, I don't have a purist attitude it's just I think when it's needed it should be there but not all the time like uh, you know watch films nowadays is just you know very fast editing just because they don't want to lose the audience not because it's needed for that specific moment in the movie. There's nothing wrong to apply it when it's needed. It's just, uh, it became almost a cheap trick.
much of a car do you want? Uh, look from here, it's fine. I don't know if you're adding something uh, to the art by shooting gorillas up. It's just that you're uh, transcending the legalities and uh, financial uh, issues. And think of it in a very basic way, as if a person at the dawn of time with a camera shooting in the forest or something. 